are being told lies. We deserve better than this. We expect better than this. The systems, as they've become, work against us, not for us. So what on earth, in the time of a climate emergency, are we doing tacitly supporting expansion of the local airport? For the motion, i.e. refusal, seven, uh, 18 votes. Against the motion, seven votes. And abstaining, one. Oh, the airport uh, affects me an awful lot. I cannot get away from it because there's a flight every three minutes. And so we have noise 16 hours a day, which is daytime noise. And we have night noise, uh, which means that we can't open our bedroom windows. So um, in hot weather, we really suffer. It does have a direct impact right here in this beautiful place that we live. You know, I live on, on the edge of the Mendips. Um, we're in an area of outstanding natural beauty. And yet, uh, it's allowed to be cut through all the time with, with flights going over. You can't see, you can't see it now because it's the clouds in the clouds. The airport's plans were quite dramatic, really. They were, it was an increase from uh, to 12 million passengers, so an extra 2 million passengers a year. One of the things that perhaps people don't know about Bristol Airport is the way they make their money isn't from the airlines. It's, it's actually largely from car parking, which is one of the reasons, of course, it's good for them that there's no rail link from Bristol to the airport. They don't want to dissuade people using private cars, so it clogs up all these little roads. The location of the airport is right in the middle of lots of little villages. A key element of the expansion plan was to build a multi-storey car park on Greenbelt land. Local people were horrified by, and myself as a member of the Green Party was completely horrified by that. I think when I started off, there was a naive hope that we could influence the airport, the management in the airport, and the owners of the airport. But really, we'd written hundreds of letters, and they hadn't even acknowledged us. Bristol Airport is owned by Ontario Teachers' Pension Plan, so the pension fund for the Ontario teachers, which you somehow might imagine would be a sort of progressive organisation and perhaps an ethical organisation. Actually, pretty much the opposite is true. If my pension fund was invested in airport expansion, I would be absolutely mortified. They're the sixth largest pension fund in the world, and they're worth $200 billion. So we thought we'd go down there and try to speak to them. But we'd also hold a small demonstration outside. We were relatively new to non-violent direct action and it was scary actually. <laughs> Twenty-three thousand extra flights a year, and that's just in Bristol. Do the teachers know? We need to try and make sure they do know, and that's part of the reason we're demonstrating. Is so the teachers in Ontario understand 
that they're killing our children. We decided ultimately that it, it wasn't a good strategy to try and change the mind of Ontario Teachers Pension Plan as the only thing I think they're really interested in is the return on their investments. That's, that's the conclusion I quickly came to. What we all had was a sense of this being a, a David and Goliath fight that we just reckoned on the economic clout, the political might of the airport. They didn't see us as a concern and a threat. We just couldn't get through to the owners or the management of the airport. They just didn't seem to care about climate breakdown and the impact of their plans on the planet. It was contemptuous and crazy in, in this time. At the beginning, we were directing our campaign against the airport and the airport owners. And actually, they weren't the people who were going to be making the decision about um, whether the airport was expanded or not. It was going to be 27 councillors in North Somerset. In May 2019, there was a local election and the results were very surprising. I just couldn't believe the results when the, the next day because it became an independent council. This was key to our success. We had everything to go for now. We'd got a new set of district councillors to influence, change their minds and say, airports cannot expand with a climate change and biodiversity crisis. And our goal became very clear. It was about the planning process and those decision makers. When I looked at the results of that election, uh, I actually, for the first time, I, I thought, actually, we might win this. The whole ban campaign came about in 2018, the year Bristol Airport applied for their expansion. That year, the UN climate report stated quite clearly that the world is in climate and ecological crisis. We saw Australia, Siberia and California have record wildfires. Closer to home, we were seeing heat waves and flash floods becoming commonplace. There needed to be a wider community involved. We needed a coordinated, systematic campaign. BAN grew out of not just Extinction Rebellion, but all sorts of other environmental and other groups all across the, the, the west of, of England. There was John Adams and his anti-expansion group and Hillary with the councils and suddenly we could all come together. It was just wonderful meeting a set of people who actually have the same views as you without having to explain why you're doing this. I think we just formed a, a really close, cohesive knit of a group and so many great ideas came out of our meetings. It was designed to be this very inclusive protest. So a lot of people there were from local villages, had never done protests in their life before and they kept to the edge of it which was a silent protest holding hands and it was very impactful. That was good in itself but then our wonderful member Ben Moss decided that's not just enough we want to do something that really gets the press noticing us. Bristol Airport expansion all their claims pigs may fly that's why I'm up here oh, on top of here I'm locked on and I've got a wonderful well-being support team here. There's 
a load of claims about it that the airport have been getting out and it feels like because of their slickly greased media machine they're able to spread their misinformation and I think we need an opportunity to counteract that. We've got to act now. Time's running out. This is our future. A press that had only been listening to the, the airport, we need business, we need expansion, it's good for everybody, was suddenly hearing this strength of feeling on the other side. A strength of feeling not only about the climate, but about the disruption and the chaos and the dirt and the filth that the airport brings to people's lives. The airport ran this misinformation campaign. They tried to trick us into believing the information that just wasn't true. So I've got an example of that. Um, they produced a pamphlet called Net Zero Airport, um, as if an airport could ever be net zero going carbon neutral by 2025. Oh yeah, not including uh, the aircraft or, or, or the cars, it's just, just the buildings. <laughs> and yet the local media and would just regurgitate all of the press releases of this. And as a nominal journalist, this would make me furious, that laziness of not just even looking below the surface at these claims. <laughs> I would say that the, the media campaign, uh, that side of things was, was crucial. Wherever possible, we, we tried to be proactive where we knew events were coming up. But increasingly, because of the airport and their claims and their greenwash, we had to be very reactive. So we had to spend a lot of time countering this information. So we held teach-ins in local community halls. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this meeting, um, the Bristol Airport Expansion, The Truth. By calling on experts at Bristol uh, University, at UWE, the University of the West of England, experts in uh, carbon in emissions and so on, so that we could all upskill ourselves in terms of the facts of, of, of aviation. We've just kind of turned that into what it would take to, to offset those emissions. Four and a half million tonnes a year becomes 430 square miles of forest, which is an area the size of North Somerset every four months. We allow lots and lots of times to the public to ask questions and they all wanted to know what they could do to help. The message was uh, get out there and get objections in. There's just the sheer frustration, the sheer lack of engagement by the government in terms of aviation emissions, it just isn't on their radar. We went up to London because we wanted to make the point about airports in general in the UK. There are several other airports around that are still looking to expand. In the end, we decided that a message was a, a good thing to be arrested for. So just chalk spray. There wasn't any point in just spraying on the pavement anywhere. It really, we felt it needed to be on the Department for Transport to give that message that we shouldn't be expanding airports and we shouldn't be increasing air travel. And we were both caught red-handed, Pink-handed. Pink yeah. It may well have helped in terms of the coverage we got with local newspapers in Bristol and our own expansion. spectacle of the landing crew alongside the XR Samba bands. Just the sound and the drama is electrifying. It's a very funny thing leading the landing crew in our red boiler suits and Super Mario gear because I, I was busting these various semaphore moves 
Uh, I'm just hoping everyone behind me was following. The idea really was that we were all totally uh, expressionless and we were just directing. I think the public were bemused and it definitely got them thinking, so, so you know, what's going on here I, I don't understand. So it gave people not an opportunity to, to go up to them and, and explain exactly why we were there. That fun element, that colourful element, I think it's so vital to the campaign. It just, the, the press love it, of course, the cameras come out and everyone's looking. Uh, the Red Brigade helped us as well, they came in. What a wonderful, oh, there's something incredibly powerful about their stillness. So then, on the other hand, we have the Samba Band, <laughs> who helped us a lot as well. And their colour and energy, there's almost like a carnival feel. But all through it all, we're delivering a message and people are, want, they're interested, they're intrigued. We're suddenly not people who are trying to bash them over the head and say, you must do this. We're people who want to provoke interest. We want to, we want to make you think. The first banner drop that, we, that I was involved in was organising the M32 banner drop. I had to check the weather was going to be okay. The weather said it would be light rain <laughs> and yeah. light winds. Within 10 minutes, the rain had started and it gradually got worse and worse. It was torrential, wasn't it? And, and the four people who had come up, the rebels who were holding the letters, they were fantastic. I remember a Sunday morning, was it, or a Saturday morning, very early on, we walked out onto the Clifton Suspension Bridge uh, to create our own photo opportunity and standing the required distance for, from each other, we dropped our letters spelling out no airport expansion. At every stage of our campaign, when we were looking to plan events, uh, we always were very mindful that they, they had to be newsworthy. Uh, and generate a, a good picture that would tell a story and support our uh, campaign. One of the things I did early on was I made a willow plane. The first outing it had was up onto the downs where the, we made that yes. Extinction Rebellion symbol and the, the plane was there. And the willow plane went on marches that I wasn't well enough to go on, but the plane went, you know, and there was something about I'm there. Um, I'm putting my name to this, I'm, uh, this is important to me. Fairly early on in the campaign I, I had seen a photograph of about uh, 20 people and they would laid themselves out uh, in the shape of the XR logo. And at that time Bristol XR were having meetings with hundreds of people attending and I just thought it would be brilliant to go up on the downs and recreate that and have a picnic as well and make it into a real event. It was a time of coming together. <laughs> to have other groups come on board with the campaign was, was giving us a, a massive boost. And so when the Youth Strike group decided to allocate one of their marches to protest against the airport, that was brilliant. They took that message around the, the city centre, through Cabot Circus. Good opportunity to, again, get the message out there. In one of our strategic meetings, I had this sudden kind of thought of actually maybe it'd be really helpful to know where those objections are coming from. In the end it was 83% of people in North Somerset who, obje who commented objected and that's just a overwhelming public vote really and the beauty of that was that then I could write to each of the North Somerset councillors and I'd broken it down by ward. So I could actually say, in your ward, this is the level. And in some of those wards, 100% of the people who commented were against the airport. So we were so taken by the effort people had made in the community to write these objections that we decided to download them from the North Somerset Council website 
and turn it into a document. And we had those made up into eight books. There were eight books of objections. That was a million words. There was one book of supporting comments. But one by one, these, these setbacks kind of like popped up. Uh, so in, in December, we, we did have the UK general election where the Conservatives did get in with a commanding majority um, and, and did have airport expansion in their manifesto. They got in with such a commanding lead that I think it demoralised a lot of us to think, how are we going to, to get the green message across now? I just felt that there was no hope that we would have a government that was totally uh, against any kind of environmental movements, that had no understanding of the climate emergency, and that would be totally in favour of any kind of business expansion, so airport expansion would be welcomed. And I just found that totally devastating, along with all the social side of what they were planning to do. Um, and I can remember, you know, the next meeting just just crying, really, just being so upset. One of my personal low points was when the North Somerset Council Planning Department officer's report was published, because it, it wholeheartedly, without reservation, supported the airport's plans. It was so one-sided, it could uh, the report actually could have been written by the airport. One of the key turning points of the campaign was the, f the final week of January when we decided we need a big push in, in Bristol with a march through the city centre. A couple of days before, planners of North Somerset had, had recommended that the councillors accept it. So there was a real big press interest in this. It was simply days before they were going to take the decision and at 11 o'clock there were about 20 people there. And I really thought that we'd made a miscalculation and that this was going to impact, this could impact the, the result. And then I looked up and I saw the landing crew arriving in the distance. People just seemed to, to come uh, from the various roads and it did gain local press and, and TV uh, attention and just sent the message out across the region that there were a hell of a lot of people that were really annoyed that the airport were planning to expand. We're the voice of the planet, the voice of the children, the voice of the future. We must be heard. But it also coincided with a, a tweet from Massive Attack who were also against the airport and that went out to, to their supporters. I think as a result of those two events, we saw objections just rocket during over that weekend. They only had to give us two weeks notice to when the planning um, meeting was going to happen. So we had to be prepared the whole way through. I feel really emotional about that. When we got the date of the committee hearing, we sort of went into overdrive as, as, as an organisation. Ambitiously, we decided to have a, a three-day vigil outside the town hall. Uh, so with the three-day vigil, the, the Saturday turned out to be, I suppose, the main day of activity. But throughout the vigil, our base and location was going to be outside the town hall, where the decision was going to be made ultimately. One of the XR groups uh, was really keen to make use of the beach and do uh, creative sand work. Another group came up with the idea of, uh, of actually getting people to put their heads in the sand. And that would represent the fact that we, we can't ignore the, the climate change. We can't make a, a decision where we just, uh, you know, shut ourselves off from the destruction of climate change. 
this is what we're doing with the climate emergency. How long can we stay in this place of dissonance, of just closing our ears, la la la, you know, we can carry on with business as usual. No, we can't. And we were amazed that somebody was able to source this sculpture of an ostrich with its head in the sand. And that became the centerpiece. It's an image that people will remember. It appeared in the Guardian and the local papers, so it obviously got across an important message. The whole weekend had been an amazing kind of spectacle of, of activism. Emergency exits are located in the years 2025, 2030 and 2050. <laughs> with a number of marches, with music, music everywhere. A big storm was, was forecast for the Sunday, which meant that we had to cancel all the scheduled events, but we thought it really important that we actually had a presence there. I was so impressed with their dedication. We got help from loads of people, local restaurants were giving us food, uh, a local vicar in a Methodist church offered us a place to store our stuff. It, it, was, it was great, and, uh, and in a way, although it was a horrible day, it was also a kind of highlight because it showed people's commitment. The Sunday had been a washout, but the Monday, the Monday was a great day. Uh, lots of things going on, building up to the, the vote in the evening. We saw the councillors arrive. I, I mean, I couldn't have put my hand on my heart and said, we're going to win. I wasn't too tense about the actual meeting until I actually got in and sat down. Uh, and then I looked around and I thought, now's the moment of truth. A year's work really has gone into this. preparing to going into the meeting. I, I really thought it could go either way. It really was down to those 27 councillors. Were they listening to our campaign, but more, more so listening and, and thinking about the comments that their constituents had made? Having read the report, attended several site visits and studied several sources of information, I wish to propose in the strongest possible terms that we vote tonight against our officer's recommendation and refuse permission. The arguments that anybody had for expansion just were blown out of the water mm. by the quality of the speeches against expansion. Climate change will radically reshape how we live, work and play. Yet market-driven predict and provide transport planning remains dominant in this country. And the airport tells us that the increased demand will not go away. We appear to be locked into business as usual. It was a delight to hear people speak so wonderfully about what's important and meaningful right now. The morally right choice and the legally sensible choice is to refuse this application. I thank and I will support Councillor Smog motion on that basis. And I'm pleased to be able to say that I'm making a choice that, that means I'll be able to look my daughter in the eye for eyes for year to come, years to come. Thank you. Chairman, members, you, you've requested a named vote, so the process. We didn't have. need to wait for the count in a way, but everybody kept quiet until they did the final count going round. And then there was just an explosion. The motion is there for When the results did come through, 18 votes to seven rejecting I I expansion was just a, a, a brilliant moment. <laughs> When the result came, it felt like a huge nod to truth, to love. 
I, I really see how courageous those councillors were. All of us sort of were hugging and, you know, turning to each other in tears. Just, it felt, it felt like it had been such hard work to get to that point, but it was so worth it. I couldn't look at anybody. I just felt like crying and I just had to put my <laughs> hands over my eyes and my head down because I'd worked so hard as everybody else had to achieve this result. It was just, the feeling was overwhelming. This is about standing together, united in our opposition to the expansion of the airport, whatever the diversity of our political views and outlook on life. Activism works. Just look at Bristol as an example. The other week, the plans to expand the Bristol airport were cancelled. A lot thanks to climate activists. Yeah.